The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the uh, November 14th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. <clears throat> hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shifts shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what these bulls and bears, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to you when I just passed one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in. Phone lines are clear, 877-927-6648. And if you can't call in, we've got you covered there. Send me an email. Let those fingers do the walking. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. But inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And do it early. Do it early. So uh, because of uh, the Internet service providers, uh, you never know when that message is going to really get to me. So do that early if you can. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got mixed markets out here, relatively flat, so to speak. The biggest mover to the downside is the semiconductors are off nearly four tenths of a percent. That would be uh, six points, straight out of 1726. Dow is off 22 points, not even one tenth of a percent out there. S&P is down 72 pennies, so it's flat. Oh, 69 now. Uh, you got the NDX 100 off uh, nine bucks. That's uh, uh, 0 0.12 percent. The trannies are up. Uh, well, they're really flat, but they're up two points out there. Uh, not flat is uh, gold. Gold's uh, trading out to 1472. So far, it is tested and rejected. It's oscillator and change line. We'll take a look at that. That would mean that the uh, counter trend rally could be over, folks. Uh, tighten up those stops if you are long. That is for sure. You've got silver up eight pennies. She's trading at 1695. Light sweet crude is off 12 cents. Uh, Treasury bonds, a 30 year is up a full point and three ticks out there. Trade at 158.23. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside it is Mercado Libre. That's up 22 bucks or 4%. Google's up 11. Intuitive Surgical, nine. Uh, Rieta Pharmaceuticals up eight. To the downside, Weibo Corp down eight bucks and change. Wix is off eight and change. Biogen off eight and change. Quaker Chemical off eight and change a lot of eights and a change out there uh, so let's go uh, let's go take a look at um, well let's go to our first question that's what we really should do the first question coming in from Michael P Michael says can we talk about MJ on the show and really I think Michael Jordan one of the best basketball players out there he wore my favorite number same jersey that I wore playing basketball although you know, uh, my skills uh, wouldn't even fit on his little pinky finger out there. But that's probably not the MJ that uh, Michael wanted me to talk about. Michael probably wanted me to talk about that alternative harvest ETF. Uh, alternative harvest. I believe that is a uh, pot stock out there. And Michael's looking for an entry point for a long term trade. Right now, what we can see is there's not a single. Now, there's just a couple of shareholders, very few that have made any money on this equity. Those are the ones that uh, bought it today, somewhere between the price of 1703 and 1724. Those are the only ones that have made even a cent on this trade out there. So basically everybody is in the red on this. And Michael, I don't want you to be in the red on MJ, the ETF 
for alternative harvest out here. Now, as you can see, what price has done this week, bearish, it's trading below its bullish structured weekly profile. There's no monthly profile for us to look at or daily at this stage out here. So that's not good news, at least with regard to support and resistance. But let's go take a look at the other charts out here. The other charts, meaning the daily, the weekly, I don't know that the monthly will help us all out. But what we can see, so this one, it did most recently top. It was a TD setup nine count uh, that uh, identified that uh, top out here that was on the trading day of October 29th. Now price is moving lower shoot it close below the low of a hammer candle out there we know that's never good but price is moving lower doing it with less relative energy and what that means is continue watching michael for some type of bullish reversal candle if you were to get that as long as price is moving lower doing less relative energy then you would have a roads momentum indicator bottom pattern out there the weekly is doing the same thing now very likely it's either in wave number six or five out here but on a weekly basis price is moving lower but here's the beauty of this you can see stevie's green and red line out here mike and uh, price is not closed above that um has been trading below that area since April 5th out here. Right now, that number is 2005. Even if you do get the bullish signal out here, the bullish candle that is, you're going to need to see price close above 2005 for this thing to have any chance of being anything other than a counter trend move. So at this stage of the game, no one is having fun with alternative harvest. And I don't want you to join that pity party. So keep those hands in your pocket. Let's go out to uh, Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Uh, great, Steve. Uh, first of all, you gave some really good advice yesterday. I was looking at uh, options on Cisco, CSCO. They brought out yes. their earnings, and the earnings are good. Revenues are good, but bad expectations. And uh, so the stock got killed. And I was looking at January options on it, and I just wondered, uh, is this a good time to get on, or do I wait a little longer? Okay. So let's try to figure this out. Now, for some reason, and it must be because I have a bunch of things running in the background, my, my, my weekly and daily chart right now, my white background screens aren't um, showing – uh, today's activity. But when we looked at it yesterday, I believe we looked at the weekly chart that had the road momentum indicator signal. We looked at last week where price had bounced up to Stevie's red line. That was the indication that, um, because, especially because the line was red, that um, I was suggesting for you to not take a long position in this. Um, and this week is the same thing. And that can often be where any counter trend rally is going to fail. That would be really the first failure area out there. So I'm glad that we just took a look at this objectively and um so now the question would be you know where is a potential entry point again my daily chart that i put up here i'm just looking to see if there's any kind of uh any kind of other breakout support level that i can identify for you so i don't have that um it's trading out at 44.72 let me come back to my weekly chart here and on the weekly chart i believe there was a weekly breakout at 43 bucks between $41.20 and $43 is very likely where this is a targeting at a minimum. But do me a favor, hang on through the break. We'll finish taking a look at Cisco for Ron in Denver, Colorado. Steve Rhodes with TFM. Be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. back folks Dow's off 29 s ps off uh, two we're speaking with ron in denver colorado and what we're taking a look at is uh is cisco so ron i think that you know you and i used the weekly chart yesterday to assist us with 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 this with what cisco was doing out here and i'm going to start uh -huh. with the weekly chart right now and uh, so on a weekly basis this appears to be we won't know till tomorrow's close but as of 118 in the afternoon it looks like cisco may take out its weekly swing point that was a week that began august 12th that price point was 46 bucks even steven there was 154 million shares you're at 107 million shares right now so i don't know whether we'll take it out with volume or not it, it may but even if it doesn't price is below that swing point it still sets up the a to b equal cd pattern that uh, gives you a price projection of 38 for the one-to-one -one, i would say it's more like a 34 dollar level out here that you're looking at in cisco and, and then what we would need to see um ron is some type of bottoming pattern out there and i just don't we just have to wait for price to continue to move lower i believe uh and, and watch it over the coming week or weeks to see if that bottom pattern because what this could set up this could be an A to B equal C D to the downside, and it could set up a Gartley buy pattern. But right now, okay. I don't I don't see any kind of play today, if that's what you were asking. And I probably don't yeah. see any kind of play I'll, tomorrow. I'll, I'll just wait. Till, I'll be patient with it. Can I yeah. ask you one more yeah. that I have a position in? Sure. Uh, I own about 300 shares of Amaron, A-M-R-N. They stopped trading today. Then I've got 10 calls on a bull spread that expires in January, 17 to 25. AMRN. Yeah. I was in it before and they got some good news. It ran up to 23. I sold some. I should have sold it all. They did a secondary and knocked it back down. Now they stopped trading. They're in a FDA meeting this morning. Uh, you know, I'm planning, I think, to sell the stock and hold on the options. But yeah. it's hard to know how to treat it. AMRN. So, this, yeah. is, this is one that this drug saved my gal's life. She, uh, uh, okay, her triglycerides okay. are 2,300. She, she started taking this drug, and a week and a half later, it dropped down to 230. So, I think I mentioned it about four yeah. months, five months ago. You did. You you absolutely did. And, you know, so when we take a look at the stock, if you take a look at the, uh, wow. So this must have been a reverse merger that they went into. 
Uh, well, I, I don't well, know. Well, they that. did a secondary and diluted the stock. That's when they dropped down. Sure. No, I, I understand that piece of it. Uh, so when I pull the monthly chart, Ron, back here, it takes me back to 1993. And, oh. and and there's no there's no real volume or anything on this not until you get into the 2010 type time frame um, and so it looks to me like like these companies and, and I could be wrong but when I see something like this it looks like it was a reverse merger into a shell that already existed out here oh I see so I can't really use that I now I, I would go back and verify that, but just simply because of basically a lack yeah. of volume out here. What The reason yeah. why I went ahead and pulled that back was because a lot of times what we do as technicians is look for prior highs out here, you sure. know, and this is this would be telling me. So either it was done like that or they've done a lot of reverse stock split or it's a lot of stock splits out here, not reverse stock splits. Or, or it might have just split. tanked and they got FDA approval last uh, November, about a year ago. Well, except that how likely do you think that Amaron traded at a price point to $1,425 no, back in 1983? Yeah, right. I'm sure they, yeah, they, yeah. they probably did so that's, reverse yes. it. So I get, then the point that I really wanted to make, I'm sure that that's not lot likely and so I, I can't really go back on the chart here and and start giving you information about where this thing might head to and try to find some other resistance and basically what I'm, I'm i'm sharing with you is i just don't you, you know the the month of look here's the deal the month of uh of september whatever they released out there the fda or or whomever and look your 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 partner your girlfriend um, you know, ha has had a miraculous uh, result in taking uh, their their uh, their medications out here, right. and that's one wide ranging bar in September of 2018 out here. You know, is this thing going to take out its highs of 23.91 from back in July of this year? I I don't I don't you know the volume on that monthly bar was 20 281 million. You're at 133. You're halfway through the month. You know, you multiply times two, and it's pretty close to that. So it's not like it's pushing highs with light volume. I, okay. I don't really have any reasons for you to to exit this trade, you know, whether I look at a daily, a weekly, or a monthly time frame out here. So, um, Well, one thing I'm so, worried about is they, them doing another secondary. If it runs up, they want to raise more money, they'll do another secondary and knock it back down. Sure, sure. That's why I'm so, thinking of selling the stock and holding on to the options and see what happens. Right. Right. Well, so in this one here, so unlike maybe when we took a look at Cisco yesterday and, and we could we could make a conclusion um, about what the uh, what the charts were telling us uh, yeah. in this case here, I, I don't have a, a good a good deduction. I don't have I, I just don't I have there's no information on the charts to really assist us. So in that case, I just think you've got to rely on your your economics. You know, okay. you as an individual and as a trader out there, yeah. and what's going to work best for you. And it seems like in just listening to you, your biggest fear is that these guys are going to go ahead and issue more stock, dilute the stock, so to speak. And, you know, you may not want to ride that out. That's one right. of those elements. Unless you're an insider, how do we know sure. um, what, yeah. what they're going to do? Yeah. But Some insider it, just sold about a week ago, so maybe that's not a good sign. <laughs> Yes, um, but were those planned sales? You know, that that's a thing I don't – you really have to go back. And just because insiders are trading – so picture it like this. You and I own this private company. I'm not saying necessarily this one, but a private company. You know, we've worked 10 years, 15 years, all our blood and sweat and tears into it. Um, you know, you take it public with the ability to help your – uh, your other uh, co-workers, employees, be able to benefit from all of our efforts. But before you get into that uh, and you go public, you know, you create a, uh, an agreement, a document where you have a certain amount of shares that are being sold periodically. So sometimes sure. there's insider trading that is just simply a setup of, uh, of, of uh, you know, of the, of the program, so to speak, out there. So insider okay. trading on its own, you, you can't just jump to the conclusion that that means that they're just trying to exodus the stock or they have some piece of information yeah. you know that's How going significant to significant is the buying yeah okay. yeah yeah I, you just you, you know look you can you can just simply go to the to the um 
uh, to the SEC, and you can do your own research. You can take a look at every 8K that's been filed, and then yeah. uh, you will see, uh, with regard to the trading going on by insiders, whether it was a uh, was already a pre pre agreement that was already you know that's in process, and there's going to be selling every whatever the periodic time frame was or is. Sure. Thank you very much. Sorry to take up so much time. No, it's Thank okay. You. Hey, we, we we love hearing from you, and uh, we'll look forward to your to your next call. So thanks for calling in. That was Ron in uh, Denver. Uh, John in the Den wanted to take a look at uh, gold and silver. So, folks, if you remember when we were taking a look at Cisco yesterday, again, it was the mere fact that price, this is not an updated chart right now for, for reasons I don't know, but I'll deal with that later. Uh, but price on a weekly basis is running right into Stevie's red line. That's where counter trend rallies in a move will typically peter out, so to speak and nothing against Peter. And if we take a look at gold right now, this chart is updated. And you take a look at where it's trading right now. It's trading right into, and this is on a daily basis, Stevie's red line. Tighten those stops, folks. The same exact outcome can occur as what we just took a look at inside of Cisco. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at gold. Let's go back to the uh, gold contract out here. And now we're taking a look at my black background chart, the e-signal chart here. And what you can see 
is is that uh, gold is trying to form a new Taz daily profile. And the top of that box is 1474.60, and the high today is 1475. You're trading at 1473.70. So you've got Stevie's red line. You've got the top of a Taz market profile. And again, all this suggests is tightening your stops. You're up against uh, two significant resistance levels, one having nothing to do with the other out there. It doesn't mean that price can't overcome resistance. It's just that that's where you're at. If this is just a counter trend rally that this is where it stops it's it's really not complicated uh we take a look at understanding support and resistance out there now the question was what, what is silver doing so silver's chart looks different than uh, gold's obviously however silver also trying to form a new daily profile today now i say trying to form it won't be cemented until tomorrow but we're going to use the information that's available to us the top of its daily box that it's trying to form is 1709 and the high today is 1708 Mm -hmm. Sounds like resistance to me out there. Uh, if I take a look at my other chart out here, Stevie's red line is a tad higher. So maybe there's an intraday spike or something up to 1721 or thereabouts because that number will change as price moves higher or lower. There's a valid A to B equals CD to the downside. And so far, with regard to precious metals, this move is nothing more than a counter trend rally up into resistance. You clear resistance, then we've got something else to take a look at. But right now, we've got to go with what it is that we see. And a gold, definitely resistance. Silver, well, it's at the one of two. Uh, it's basically hit the top of its uh, daily profile out there. And it can extend a bit higher into Stevie's red line. So that's what I see when I take a look at the precious metals. Mike wanted to take a look at uh, CGC out here. Let's go take a look at that. I believe that's canopy growth. Can Canopy growth also moving down, doing it with big volume or what appears to be big volume, 19 million shares so far today, gapping down fairly significantly. Um, now, in this case here, there are some shareholders that are in the uh, green, so to speak, and I'm not talking about flower buds or something like that, but uh, at least there are some shareholders that, that maybe are in the money. I, I don't know. Maybe Canopy Growth was also a shell corporation out here. I um, mean, going back and taking a look at this takes me back to 2014 out here. You know, not much in the way of shares or anything, but neither event out here. Mike K, we take a look at profiles below daily, weekly, and monthly out here. Um, that's not good. Uh, so I don't see a bottom. Uh, because my chart isn't updated on my other system, I'll have to pull over my new tools that I'm working on, but they're not, the programming is not completed on this. Here, this is, I'm going to show this is the weekly time frame chart uh, for you. And part of those new tools, they automatically uh, are going to determine Chapman wave counts. That's a beautiful thing uh, when this is uh, totally complete. Uh, they've got our TAS profiles. They've got my TD9 counts in here. They've got part of the Rose Momentum indicator signals going. So just like uh, MJ, uh, Mike, um, what we can see is price on a weekly basis is uh, moving lower, doing less relative energy out there. You can also see the weekly Stevie's red line. Uh, that was the high of this week, in essence. So price has hit that and rejected that. You, too, would be looking for some type of bullish reversal signal. If I go over and take a look at the uh, daily time frame out here. Now, in this case, I've got both uh, daily and weekly let me do this here. I've got both uh, daily and uh, weekly uh, oscillator and change line levels in here. Once I change this, it'll start to flow a little bit easier. The one that looks like a stair step is the weekly time frame because I'm, I'm on a daily chart. And the uh, one uh, that is uh, softer in uh, moves is the is the daily one. But again, here, price moving higher at lower, I should say, doing less relative energy. And Mike, uh, at a minimum, you need to see some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. So it's really the same advice that we gave to Michael P, which is um, keep those hands in your pockets right now. Keep an eye out for some type of bullish reversal candle. If you see one, you know, let me know. Let's go take a look at the stock, understand what it's doing in relationship to either new profiles that form out there or potentially, um, you know, something else, some other pattern that might uh, that might occur. Um, so I hope that that helps you out. I've got a question here. Let me see from uh, Matt Z. Matt says, uh, please look at BLDP, fuel cell stock out here. So let's go take a look at uh, BLDP. And uh, hey, 
Matt Z, Matt Z. I can't do all of these stocks for you, but let's take a look at a couple of them. Or if I can, I'll do one and, and try to come back to the others. But let's take a look at this. I don't know if you're in this, you're not in this, but boy, it looks positive. Here, basically, unlike a couple stocks we looked at, everybody is in the green here. Uh, so in essence, everybody except a few shareholders today are, are making money. And that's a beautiful thing out there. So now what we want to try to understand is inside of BLDP, make sure I got the right, yeah, BLDP, that's Ballard Power Systems out here. Um, let me let me pull the other let me pull the other chart up. See if we can try to figure this out here. Again, my 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 normal charts are not updated. So BLDP, this is going to be close enough uh, for me. And so what I can see here on a daily basis, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. Was doing that yesterday. You got that. Um, dark cloud cover candle that was a bearish reversal signal but price didn't break through any levels of support uh that's levels of support either being the top of the profile the daily profile or the oscillator and change line so price continues to move higher you want to be on the, this is matt you want to be on the lookout for a bearish reversal candle uh and then a close below some type of support right now that support would be six dollars and 17 cents using stevie's uh green line let me switch this to a weekly time frame see what we have here on a weekly basis uh the weekly basis um and i, I don't want to completely rely on the automated chapman wave uh, counts out here uh, but it does look uh, it does look uh, uh, accurate to me. It's formed with wave number seven or letter G on the bottom, but it has surpassed that on two counts, two levels of counts out here. So this on a weekly basis can you know look strong. Uh, so I don't see anything wrong with the with this stock whatsoever. Let's see, you asked about um, plug. So let me do the second one, PLUG. Let's see what did I oh, PLUG, not PLUB. Um, so here now plug is moving higher doing less relative energy this is the weekly time frame that we're looking at there's nothing bearish um, about this yet um, it's just a potential pattern and something to be on the lookout for but let's see if the daily has a similar pattern so on a daily basis price is also moving higher doing less relative energy out there just watch for a bearish reversal candle today's candle even though it is traded lower uh, since the open it is not a bearish reversal candle. It's just a red body candle, meaning where price clo opens and closes out here. So uh, plug uh, looks pretty, looks good. Looks good just as the uh, uh, Ballard Power Systems does. So uh, Matt, thanks for writing in. I hope that that uh, helps you out with uh, with the uh, fuel cell sector, if all those stocks were inside the fewer sector, fuel cell sector. Hey folks, you try saying that one time relatively fast. So we get back from this break for Eddie. Let's go take a look at NVIDIA. Ticker symbol there is NV. D A. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, still relatively uh, flattish style markets out here. The Dow's off, Dow's off 44, S&P is down 3. We're going to take a look at uh, NVIDIA. So Eddie wants to take a look at NVIDIA and um, applied materials because they're coming out with earnings tonight. He's got long holdings in both, looking for some kind of information. So the first thing we know, Eddie, is profile-wise, price above the daily, weekly, and uh, monthly. Uh, top of their boxes. So that says price can continue to run higher. Um, the the issue, the concern that you should have, it's not telling, I'm not telling you to sell it, but this, this stock has really gotten tired. And it's really gotten tired. Let me just expand on the uh, daily time frame chart out here. And let me just get my yellow rectangular type box. And, and uh, well, this is, this is how I will, well, I'll try to draw it. I thought it was a yellow rectangle. What the Sam heck happened there? Let's just try this one more time. Used to be a yellow rectangular box. Actually, I can kind of do it from here. Okay, there we go. So now what I'm trying to encompass is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trading sessions. And seven of those eight trading sessions are narrow bodied candles. A few of them such as the candle on November 8th, that was a doji candle. November 12th, that was a doji candle. Yesterday, um, you know, close, maybe no cigar out there. And today is close, no cigar just yet, but, but maybe a doji, just depends on where it closes. So doji candles up at resistance. And um, Eddie, that's really where they do their magic is up at resistance out there. And the reason is because of the meaning behind a doji candle, which is just simply that the market is tired. That would be one way of, uh, of describing that candle. And so it's telling you up at these highs, it's, it's, it's tired. Now, because this has gone on sideways for all these sessions, is it regenerating some energy to move higher? You know, these are things I don't know. I can just assess for you what traders are telling you. And uh, so maybe the conviction they need is some type of earnings release. Look, if this does trade to the downside out here, you've got support at 199, 193, and 187, 181. Uh, when we take a look at the daily set of profiles out there, 180 from a weekly standpoint, 191 from the monthly standpoint out there. So I don't know, you know, if you're in this from the long haul, uh, you know, maybe you make a, a different decision. But those would be the support areas. Again, because price is above resistance, uh, that being profile levels out here, the next real resistance level is its high, its all-time high from back in October in the 292 area out there. And so... 
Uh, by the way, price took out a B point, which was April 8th on a weekly basis at 53 million shares, does with 38, 31. So it hasn't really taken out a swing point with conviction out here. I guess the weekly chart really generating for for us what the uh, what the Japanese candlesticks, the do those doji or small bodied candles look like on the daily chart. Um, price is moving higher, doing it with less relative energy out there, but. Um, you know, so this would suggest to us that uh, that combined with the doji candles that the uh, that the way that the market's going to respond is this will trade lower. Uh, that's really kind of the signals that I'm seeing here at this stage of the uh, game. And that's looking at the daily time frame chart. You mentioned applied materials. Let me put AMAT up on the screen. Again, I'm going to use Stevie's uh, new tools that I'm developing. So the only thing that's really not working that well, just some additional enhancements, is the automated wave count piece of it. But uh, what AMAT looks like it's doing today is creating a TD setup nine count. Yesterday's high would have been the high price movement higher doing less relative energy. I don't have a bearish reversal candle, but this uh, does and price is above support. But if it does pull back 50, 54, 64 would be the first area that I'd be looking at. And then 52, 73 would be the other one. So of the two, which one looks better out here? They're both really look about the same. One has those small-bodied candles telling you it's more tired than the other, which is AMAT is not as tired, so to speak, but it's they both have these topping signals. So do the charts know something about how shareholders are going to treat the news regardless of what the news is? Because the news isn't published. The news about Cisco wasn't published. You know, so that's that. those are the signals. But, Daddy, I don't know where you're at in this. And um, so th those are the, those, those are what the, that's what the charts are uh, telling you as we speak uh, at this moment. Okay, so I don't have any other requests that are in, I believe. No, I don't. I do. I take that back. Uh, Bob wants to take a look at ticker symbol BDSI. Now, and I got to learn how to type. I went to the uh, TFNN School of Typing, and uh, that can get you in a lot of trouble. But so Bob says, I'll paraphrase here. Um, been in it for over a year. <coughs> this is a great trade out there. And uh, <coughs> he just doesn't want to be, his words, doesn't want to be a, a pig because he's got such a big winner out here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner is what uh, he's got. So if we, um, let me just open up the monthly time frame chart, take this back. Okay, so uh, pretty good. So here we go. Bob, you, you're already looking at this. You're in the Tiger's Den, but price is above the daily, weekly, and monthly profiles out there. So that is certainly a bullish or suggesting price could move higher out here. Um, I'm going to pull over my other chart. Uh, what do we know? Yesterday was a gap higher. That's a bullish signal. Price is moving higher to a less relative energy. Just a caution. You need to wait and see for a bullish candle to uh, confirm. Uh, today is a bullish candle, bull sash candle. Bull and bear sash candles, by the way, folks, they don't need the market to either be in an uptrend or a downtrend. So those candles have more meaning at tops and bottoms. Um, in this case here, a bull sash would have more meaning at a bottom versus a top and then vice versa. So I don't see any reason here on a daily basis to uh, bug out, so to speak. If I change this over to a weekly time frame, let's see what the uh, weekly uh, generates for us. There's no reasons here on a weekly chart to uh, bug out of this. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, price took out the resistance level of where it broke down at 521. So this looks good too. Looks like it's gonna be in wave uh, D or F. Uh, just depending on uh, which uh, bar you want to go ahead and uh, start your counts from. Let me put this on a monthly time frame for you. And on a monthly, do we have any TD counts or anything to worry about? So here we go. No sound. Man, I am sorry to hear about no sound. Uh, that's a real problem because I've been jibber jabbering. But uh, I'm assuming that we've got sound. Oh, now, now we might have sound. Are you kidding me? Son of a gun. Wow. All right, Bob, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to give you the uh, the short version of this because we only have about 30 seconds out here. Everything looks really good with this stock, BDSI. 
Its next target level would appear to be where it broke down on a monthly basis, and that price point is 779. That doesn't mean you need to sell at 779, but that is your next resistance level as of 150 in the afternoon on November the uh, 15th. Yeah, no, November the 14th. Don't want to get ahead of myself. So stay in this trade. You're not being a pig. It looks really good. We all wish we were in your position. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So we got the two-minute uh, wrap uh, going here right now. And nothing really has changed significantly in the market, relatively flat out there. We do have some potential new information that I can pass along to you uh, so that you'll be able to monitor, and that is with the equity futures contracts and taking a look at the uh, daily charts here uh, for the ES, the NQ, and the YM, Russell 2000 being left out. But uh, there are new profiles that are attempting to form. This is the third day in a row for the ES and the NQ that these profiles, and the Dow has been on and off during these past three days out there, where it's attempting to form a new profile. Again, using Stevie's advanced Doppler system out here, but using it, here's what we know so far. Uh, prices rejected resistance being the top of the boxes for the ES and, and NQ and YM. Respectively, those are 3098, 8272, and 27759. Please recognize 
Those levels may change overnight. We got to go with the information that we've got. This is our football field out here. And if you want to be Bill Bilicek out there, um, uh, then uh, what you want to do is you want to use uh, all the advanced information as you can. Uh, so we're using real intelligence, not artificial intelligence. Now, what I mean by that, too, is that uh, there's not going to be a change in trend until we see a key level of support being broken. And right now we'll go with those daily profile levels. So what are those areas? Well, the bottom of the box for the ES Mini is 3070. Yesterday was 3066. The day before was like 3060. Um, again, they continue to develop. Maybe these will take hold. I'll know tomorrow or should know tomorrow. But the bottom of the NQ is 8188 and the Dow is 27383. That's quite a few points uh, below where it's trending right now. So, uh, but those would be the levels of support that you would need to see price close below to suggest that there's a top and that there is a change in trend. Otherwise, the bottoms of those boxes are what most would call the next buy the dip areas. Folks, thanks so much for being here. I want you to have a terrific Thursday, even a better Thursday evening. But most of all, please join me tomorrow on Fabulous Friday at 1 o'clock. Until then, stay tuned. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien to take it on home. And we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Okay.